Hey, I'm Michael Hoff of Digital Theologian, and today I might be answering a question that no one is asking, and that is, what is chesed? This single Hebrew word gets translated so many different ways, and it is a foundational concept for understanding the Old Testament and the character of God. So what is this Old Testament word that means steadfast love, loving kindness, mercy, compassion, faithfulness? While chesed has been expressed through a number of different words, originally in the translation of the Septuagint into Greek, and then now throughout a variety of different English translations, right? this concept still is best understood in terms of covenant. That as God makes a promise to his people, chesed is something that he does in response to that covenant to them. So we see that covenant faithfulness or covenant loyalty is an excellent definition of this word. That when God makes a promise to his people, he keeps it. He follows through. He is faithful to his word. He is faithful to his covenant. And so this word, chesed, when we see it expressed as love or steadfast love, it's God who has made a promise to his people, standing with them in the midst of challenges to be faithful to them through difficulty, through suffering, through a, a variety of intense circumstances. He is with them. He is for them. He is working things to their good. We can look at places like Deuteronomy 18 to see the kind of good things that God has promised for those who have hitched their wagon to his promises. And he is faithful to come through on those things. As he is in relationship with people, he shows his loving kindness, his mercy, his compassion, right? All of that, all of those concepts are wrapped up in chesed. And it means that God is there graciously, faithfully, lovingly on behalf of the people with whom he has made a covenant. And you see that in the case of Abraham. You see that in the case of David. You see that throughout the entirety of the Old Testament. As God has made promises to people, he then puts himself on the line for their sake. It shows up in so many of our favorite Old Testament passages, like Psalm 23, 6, where it says, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of our Lord forever. And then as you look at Psalm 145, 8, it gets translated this way. The Lord is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love. Or maybe you prefer a word from the prophets, like in Micah chapter 7, verse 18, where it says, Who is a God like you, pardoning iniquity and passing over the transgression of the remnant of your possession? He does not retain his anger forever because he delights in showing clemency. What does steadfast love really mean? So one of the tricky things with the word chesed is that it appears to be a word that is originally Hebrew. And so it doesn't have any other languages that we can kind of trace it back to. And as you look at the Septuagint, which is the Greek translation of the Hebrew Old Testament, in the places where chesed shows up, you get a variety of different terms. You, you get words like compassion and mercy. You have a variety of different Greek words that are used to translate this one Hebrew word. And that really gets carried forward in English, where it depends on the translator and what they want to emphasize and really the context of that specific word. But I think it's essential for us to understand the fundamental baseline meaning of the word chesed. And then we can see some of the nuances of that as we look at different contexts. This is one of those words that shows up in 238 different verses and is used a total of 246 different times in the Old Testament. And from the examples I've already quoted, you can see that some of the things that it touches on are essential for our faith and our understanding of who God is and how God interacts with people. Over half of all the times that chesed shows up in the Old Testament is within the Psalms. It is a word that is comfortable in poetic language, and yet we also see it being expressed significantly within Deuteronomy. So there are a number of places where you experience chesed in the law and where chesed is expressed in terms of worship and honoring God through song. This is a pretty diverse word and it carries a ton of weight. Before we try to get at understanding what chesed means for God and humans, 
it's important for us to take a step back and look at chesed in human-to-human interaction, where it usually shows up as to do chesed with someone. So that shows us that there's an element of uh, of participation and cooperation that is essential to this term. You don't do chesed by yourself. Chesed involves two parties. Nobody is chesed alone, right? That chesed is expressed in relationship and in especially within covenant agreements. Chesed takes place within the context of relationship, and it's because of that that you see it used in family language between guests and their hosts. You see it showing up between lords and their vassals. It is a word that has uh, connections to loyalty and honor and is tied up with extreme acts of kindness from one person to another. So chesed is a relational term. In discussing chesed, the theological dictionary of the Old Testament says that in these kinds of human-to-human interactions, that the word chesed can essentially mean that you do good to someone else. So in these interactions, in these relationships, that when you are doing chesed, you have the best interest, the best intention, the, the best outcome for the other person as your end goal. Frequently, when you see one person do an act of chesed to another person, they respond with a similar act of chesed. There is a sense of being loyal to another person, expressing loyalty through your actions as somebody is expressing that toward you. And on two specific occasions, this is expressed through covenant language. Between Abraham and Abimelech, There is a covenant that is made, and they are told that they would do chesed one to another. And then between Jonathan and David, their relationship is expressed by them making covenant and then promising to do chesed. This relational exchange of goods for one another might be what underlies Proverbs 14.22, where it says that the one who plans good finds chesed and faithfulness. All right, so let's talk about God and chesed. It's interesting to see what God does. This is one of those things that as you study scripture, pay attention to the verbs. We see that Yahweh gives chesed. He sends chesed. He remembers chesed. He continues and shows chesed. He commands chesed and he keeps chesed. God is active when it comes to to this word. As God acts chesed, he does it on behalf of the entire nation of Israel. It's not only with individuals, though it is that, but frequently this term gets expressed for the entire people of God. God has covenant faithfulness, love, loyalty, compassion, mercy for the entire people of of God. Throughout the Psalms, the Israelites praise God for the variety of different ways that his chesed shows up on their behalf. So we see that chesed follows the people of God in Psalm 23, 6. It preserves them in Psalm 40, verse 12, and Psalm 61, verse 18. It comforts them in Psalm 119, 76, and it is great toward them in Psalm 86, verse 13. Those who have promised themselves to God in covenant, he stands with them. He stands for them. And the whole message of the book of Hosea is that as as people who consistently fail to uphold our end of the covenant, that even in God's anger, even in God's frustration, that God is still faithful to his promises. He still demonstrates this deep, satisfying, persistent love because he has made a covenant. He will love and show mercy, and be gracious, and compassionate, and loyal, that God will be true to his word. Often, even when we are not holding up our end of the agreement, God is coming through because of his goodness, because of his kindness, and he is demonstrating loving faithfulness toward us. This is one of those places where Psalm 23, 6 is in the English is just a little weak for my taste. As we read it, it says that surely goodness and mercy will follow us all the days of our lives. But but the word follow there, this isn't just a, a puppy dog following after somebody and then getting distracted and going its own way. No, this is a hunter pursuing his goal, uh, aiming for a target and then going after it. This is pursuit. This is the goodness of God, the mercy, the chesed, this this covenant faithfulness of God hunting down 
his people, to demonstrate his goodness, to pour out his blessing on his people. As we think about God's steadfast love, it's important for us to know that while it's so often expressed within the confines of covenant, it goes beyond that because God has demonstrated his love and his loyalty to humanity even before any of the biblical covenants are in place. God is our creator and because of that, he is demonstrating loyal love, chesed, covenant faithfulness, to us so that when we break covenant, God is still there with his mercy. I love that the New Testament talks about that while we were sinners, Christ died for us. While we were enemies with God, yet he loved us. Man, we have been loved first. And that steadfast love of God invites us in to be changed. And this is the God of the Old Testament. That character, that grace, that mercy, that love are put on display in the person of Jesus Christ. So the next time you're reading along in your Bible and you see the word steadfast love, you can know that it goes so much deeper than just soft sentimentality. This is God committing to his covenant and proving that he is true and being faithful no matter what because he is the creator who loves us. Thank you so much for watching. May God bless you, and I'll see you in the next one.